Hold the phone. So you are telling me that eBay most recent sold listings has Steam Siege booster boxes. Steam Siege selling for $255. That is absolutely insane to me. And we need to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, let me just tell you, you can go on TCGplayer.com. I've literally looked at this earlier today. You can buy a near mint copy of every single card from Steam Siege to complete a master set for like $150 plus tax. That is just absolutely insane. Why are booster boxes selling for $255? I just do not get it. I looked at, I had to go further, so I looked at Crimson Invasion selling for $135, Rebel Clash selling for $150, Sword and Shield Base selling for $200, Sun and Moon Base selling for $200. I don't even know what time we live in right now. This is, it's absolutely crazy to me. One of the questions that I get the most uh, especially lately, is should I be starting a Pokemon business now? Is now a good time to be starting it? Because things are absolutely crazy. And we're going to go over both the pros and the cons right now in this episode just to kind of talk about things, get a feel for why this might not be such a great time and why it might be an okay time to go ahead and start your journey in the Pokemon card industry. So with that, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, things are tough right now and there's just there's no way around it. Like, honestly, if you would have asked me uh, a year ago if you should be starting a Pokemon business, I probably would have said, eh, probably not. It's not the best time for it. Here's the pros. Here's the cons. Uh, honestly, like, when I, when I rewind time and I look back to last year when Rebel Clash, for example, came out, and this was uh, a few months later, I guess, so like nine, ten months ago, I was having struggles. We were struggling to sell booster cases, booster box cases of Rebel Clash for like $500. So when you're looking at profit margins of only about seven, eight dollars after shipping and tax, and then you move forward and you're looking at uh, Battle Styles cases selling for $700 a piece, it's just absolutely insane how much how much has changed over the past nine, ten months. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but my answer is still the same. My answer has not changed a whole lot. Back then, I probably would have told you it's probably not the best time to start your own Pokemon business. It's probably not the best time to get into this journey uh, because the margins just aren't there. It's very difficult. You've got to work really hard. It's, it's, it's very, very tough. Right now, honestly, my answer has not changed at all. And I know it's not a fair answer because I'm going to be telling you no, it's not a good time. And also, I'm going to be telling you yes, it is still a good time. But first of all, just to keep things very simple, if you're somebody who wants to go out there and you want to start a business in the Pokemon TCG industry and you're looking to make some extra money and you're looking to do it quickly, um, this probably isn't the business for you right now. Honestly, it's very, very difficult. I've seen a lot of people go out, message me, say, hey, Danny, I'm having a real hard time getting in touch with distributors and I'm accepting new accounts right now. A lot of them that I'm talking to aren't are only selling to brick and mortar places. And I mean, that's completely up to them. They Pokemon does not require distributors to sell to brick and mortar companies. They they will sell also to internet, internet retailers only. It is not a requirement from the Pokemon Company International that you have to have a brick and mortar business in order to work with distributors in selling sealed product and purchasing sealed product. But every distributor is different. Every distributor is different. They could have different requirements. And that's why it's important to look through all of them and try and get a better understanding of each one, what they have to offer and doing the proper research so that way you can make an informed decision. So right now it is very difficult. Shelves are empty, it's tough to get supplies. If you are a business and you're looking to just order product from a distributor, you are looking at like scraping the bottle of the the bottom of the barrel on everything. You're looking at theme decks maybe in stock, Tapu Coco boxes maybe in stock. Maybe you can get some of the trainer toolkits, but other than that, it's it's pretty dry. You can't get, you know, Hidden Fates Elite trainer boxes which typically fly off the shelf and Champions Path Elite trainer boxes. Any booster box right now is pretty much unfindable. And if it is findable in a distributorship, they're very very except very very expensive. I've seen distributors who are offering Evolutions booster boxes before this most recent hike. So when Evolutions booster boxes were selling for about $500 a piece, uh, I've seen distributors who are looking for anywhere between $450, $475 for a booster box so of, of Evolutions, which is crazy. It's just very, very hard. The supply is just so small and the demand is absolutely insane. So it's very difficult. And if you're somebody who's easily defeated, somebody who's not really willing to go that extra mile and look out and see what other options are available, right now probably isn't the best time to start a Pokemon business because you are going to have to think outside of the box. 
honestly, it is very, very difficult right now. And tough times require tough entrepreneurs. And that's where you can determine whether or not this business is for you or not, because you're constantly going to have to adjust your thinking. In tough situations such like we are in right now, we need to rely on grit. And that grit is what is going to differentiate us from other people out there. That's going to be that differential factor. It's easy to see the negatives and the difficulties in every opportunity, which is what we're going through right now. We have all these different opportunities and there's a lot of different negatives. But on the flip side, there are still positives that are out there. It's important not to stick around with a broken model and kind of adjust what you're doing and what you're thinking so that way you can make better decisions statistically bad decisions do not ruin companies that is not the number one cause of a company failing statistically the number one cause of a company failing is actually indecisiveness and that's why it's important to take action take risks as long as they are within your means don't do anything crazy don't go you know completely outside of your comfort zone mortgage um refinance your house, remortgage, take out a second mortgage on your house, do, do nuts things, max out credit cards or anything like that. Don't go crazy, but live within your means and try and grow something if that's what, if that's what matters to you. Did you know that there's 20,000 unique Magic the Gathering cards, over 20,000 unique Magic the Gathering cards. When it comes to Pokemon, when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, we are only at about that 10,000 mark. So if you're looking at something that could possibly pace along the lines of what Magic the Gathering has done throughout the years, and even if we can get somewhat close to that, um, I mean, there's still a lot of opportunity. When I was just browsing TCG Player the other day, I was just looking to see how many single cards, just single raw copies of cards of Magic the Gathering sell for over $1,000, sell for four figures on TCG Player. And there were pages and pages and pages. I'm talking like 13, 14 pages of singles that were selling, raw singles that were selling over $1,000. When I looked at it for Pokemon, there was one, one page. And I know there's other cards. You can get PSA graded cards. You can get CGC graded cards. You can get Becca cards. And those will obviously up the value of your card but when I'm talking about just raw copies of a card selling for four figures Pokemon not even a full page on TCG player Magic the Gathering 13 pages there is still a lot of potential there there's still a lot of room there just as a question of how is this market going to transition how is it going to continue and if we will get there and that's why it's so important my number one big point if you're looking at doing a business like this is to do your research market research is like the most important thing that you could possibly do look at everything everything become a product of the product become somebody who understands everything that's going on listen to podcasts watch youtube videos uh, go on e4 there's a fantastic forum e and then four.com go to e4 and just look look at all of the forums all of the chats all the collectors that are out there talking about these great opportunities these great things that they see it's an excellent excellent resource to help get a better understanding of everything that's going on out there that maybe you haven't even thought of because there's so much more in the world of Pokemon than just modern or than just vintage. Go on auction sites, look on Amazon, look on eBay, look on TCG Player, look on these sites to get a better understanding of where the market is all the time. Go on all these places and try and do all of your all of your like try and try and gather as much knowledge as you possibly can when we're talking about distributorships in a past video I want to pull this up here but it's very very easy to find out which distributors what places sell um, Pokemon cards. It's very easy to find. You can just go to Pokemon. There's a support ticket that's open for it. This is a Q&A. Who are your wholesale distributors? Well, look at all these. There is a ton of them that are listed here. A lot of these places have websites that you can browse in just a customer view. You don't have to have an account. Or you can just pick up the phone and call. You have to be comfortable with all of these decisions. You have to be comfortable with going out there, putting your name out there, getting a better understanding of who's in the game, what's going on in the market, and who you can reach out to. I guarantee you that not all of these all of these co companies require a brick and mortar to sell Pokemon cards to. And maybe the majority of these right now are not accepting new accounts, but you don't know unless you pick up the phone and call. You cannot get frustrated after a couple of different phone calls. You can't just contact Mad Al, GTS, and ACD and be like, hey, I called these three companies and they're not accepting new accounts right now and then stop after that. You still have Alliance, you have Gold River Distributions, you have Peach State, you have r &M, you have Sweet Deal, you have a whole slew of other companies that you can call to see, hey, are you accepting new applications right now for Pokemon? This is what I'm trying to do. And sometimes they will at least give you the application so that way they can get a better understanding of who you are and what your long game is because these companies are looking for longevity in the market. They're not looking for companies that are just coming into the game right now to try and take advantage of the market so you have to have that idea out there but do your research 
that's important, it's super important. Next up is to make sure you establish your niche. And um, there's, there's a fantastic person, his, his name is Pat Flynn, he's really into Pokemon right now. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below for both his channel and for Pokemon Radar. They both, uh, both have excellent content that's out there, but he's been saying a lot lately about how the riches are in the niches. And that's so true in everything that's going on, because if you look at Pokemon, it's such a vast range of product that's out there. You need to understand that the best thing that you can do for a business to grow a business is to work on one specific segment of the market and then expand from there. Yeah, sealed product is a disaster right now. There's not a whole lot out there, but sealed product is not the only product that's on the market. If you would have invested $1,000 in full art trainers nine months ago, you'd be sitting very pretty right now. Uh, I think that when I, when I first made one of these videos, one of these types of videos, I said that rainbow rares were severely undervalued in my opinion in the market. If you look at rainbow rares right now, they're all selling from $10 plus. But uh, nine months ago, 10 months ago, you could have bought bulk rainbow rares all day. You could have invested $1,000 into bulk rainbow rares for three, between three and $4 a piece. You'd be sitting there with you know, three to 400% return on your initial investment just there. So there are opportunities out there, whether it be Black Star promos or whether it be um, trophy cards, whatever the case may be, do research and find your niche. Find, find the thing that you are most interested and in, try and make a business of it. One, one person, uh, Steve Jobs, who is wildly successful and a great, great business mind said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And that goes so true with this, with knowing your niche, finding your niche and then sticking with it. And like I said before, Pat Flynn said it, says it best in a lot of interviews that he's done. Like I said, definitely go check him out. He has, I think his YouTube channel is called Deep Pocket Monsters right now, but he did a, an interview recently with Pokemon Radar also, so I can leave a link for that video in the description below, but it was just fantastic. Did a great job talking about how he is somebody who's newer to Pokemon coming into the game and trying to get a better understanding, but just listen to what he's saying because he's talking about all the research, all the relationships, all the things that he's done to try and get a better understanding of what's going on in the market so he can make the best decisions possible when it comes to where he's putting his money. And that's super smart. Know your limits is another thing that I want to impress upon you guys because it's super, super important. Definitely don't bite off more than you can chew and definitely don't take on more work than you can handle. A lot of people who are looking at doing this right now are looking at doing it as a supplemental idea, something that possibly could result in residual income, possibly could result in passive income, but right now, it's something that they're looking to add on to a current full-time job or a current part-time job, something that they are looking to build maybe a nest egg or something like that. And that's really what these videos are all about, are trying to help you guys find that extra three, four, five hundred dollars a month that you can start putting away for early retirement or for travel with your family or for your kids' college tuition. That's what's in my mind, that's what's important to me. That's why I started this business with Papa a long time ago or eight months ago, whatever the case may be. That's why we have worked so hard because we want to add that additional nest egg. But it's all about knowing your limits and it's all about not taking on more than you can handle. I've talked before about how my past business, I think, failed because we took on too much and we took on more than we could chew. We've been at that point now with this business where we've had to take a step back and be like, hold on a second, this might be too much. The same goes true for everybody else who's looking at starting their own business. The amount of research you put in is important, but the action that you take on it is going to be determined, that's going to determine how successful you are. If you take a lot of action, if you take too much action, you're gonna burn yourself out, you're gonna tire yourself out. Ultimately, you're probably gonna end up making mistakes, and that's definitely not the route that you wanna take when you're trying to maximize your profit. So don't take off more than you can chew. No your limits. Don't start maxing out credit cards to try and buy sealed product for a new set. Don't do anything crazy. The market is nuts right now, but you also want to live within your means. So know your limits and don't do too much. Uh, make yourself known is the next thing. Surround yourself with people like you. Start interacting with people like you, whether it be on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or different interactive portals, social media outlets that are out there. Like I said, E4 is a great opportunity for you to meet other people who are interested in Pokemon like you. Surround yourself with people like you so that way you keep that passion going, you keep that good conversation going. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. If you're somebody who really enjoys content, if you're somebody who enjoys creating content, maybe start looking at creating content of your own so that way you can start forming a little community a little bond and you can pull ideas from other people like that I have met so many wonderful people in this company in this community uh, who have given me great ideas who have helped me out with great ideas it's it's fantastic uh, and don't be afraid of rejection so making sure that you put yourself out there and reaching out to all these distributors I cannot tell you how many great relationships that I've made throughout the years whether it be with um, 
a major tur tournament organizer down in Chicago by the name of Jimmy Ballard, who has helped me out with a lot of uh, bulk things, who has helped me out with a lot of regional vending things, like where I've been able to get booths and things like that, where I've had an outlet to go and stream uh, events at the regional events, like just knowing that person, building relationships with them is fantastic. And especially right now in the market that we're in right now, having relationships with, relationships with people who are bigger players in the game uh, who have decent decent amount of products that they've built up over the years or who may have a warehouse that they can they can help you out find additional product for your website or for your storefront is huge so make sure you meet other people like you and put yourself out there don't be afraid of rejection a lot of these distributorships a lot of these distributors are very very small operations you know they're made up of five six seven eight people not a whole lot of people uh, so establishing relationships with them working with them to try and make sure that you can provide you know a, a good solution for their distributorship that you have a uh, that there's longevity there for you that you can be a long-lasting customer that they could really benefit from that's important uh, so definitely look at making yourself known and finding ways that you can do that and finally building relationships and taking risks building relationships is really just playing off what i what i had just mentioned and then taking risks trying new things putting yourself out there those are the most important things so do i think that opening a pokemon card business right now is a good idea no i think sealed product is absolutely nuts i think that the market is a little bit high i think eventually it's going to catch back up uh, and then I don't want you guys getting to the point where a year and a half from now, you're like, holy cow, Danny told me to invest all this money into Pokemon. Now Pokemon has fallen down quite a bit and I'm stuck here with, you know, $10,000 in debt that I'm not going to be able to get back. That's not what I'm saying. I don't think it's going to work out if that's the path that you want to choose. However, I do think this is a good opportunity. If you're somebody who can understand the points that I just made, if you're willing to go out and do the work, this is not just a fun, get rich quick scheme. This is something that's going to take a ton of effort and a ton of work. And I really, really do mean that you have to be okay looking things up all the time, understanding the market, researching, taking chances, failing, starting over and doing it again. Don't ever put yourself in a position where you're risking everything, but definitely take new chances. Definitely try something new. If you're somebody who hasn't really dabbled too much in grading, maybe you want to look at grading a little bit more to see if that's the kind of market that you should be going into. Maybe you have a good audience for PSA grading or Beckett grading or CGC grading. Maybe you do have a really good market for specific promo cards. Maybe you have a very good market for bulk understand all those different segues, take risks in different areas to try and get a better understanding of those areas. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much for listening to me talk for the past 15-ish minutes, 16 minutes. Um, I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Leave a thumbs up if you like what you heard. Uh, we are only a couple weeks away from Shining Fates. It's absolutely crazy. I wish you all the best of luck on your search uh, for that Eevee box with 10 packs. I hope you find it. Uh, I know it's going to be very, very tough. So like I said, if you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button down below. Until next time, guys, thank you for everything. Peace.